I hope you're well. So I made some base cabinets and some raised panel doors recently. And in this one, I'm fitting these doors to these cabinets and I'll be paying a bit of attention and going into a bit of detail about how big these doors should be or perhaps more importantly how big the gaps around them should be. Uh, like those previous videos this one's sponsored by my friends at Medite. You know Medite they're a well-established manufacturer of top quality MDF. Every painted bookcase, every wardrobe, every cabinet, every door and every set of shelves you might have seen me make or install on this channel has been made with Medite MDF, mostly MR or moisture resistant MDF, that's the MDF for the green core, because it cuts machines and takes paint particularly well. And in this video, like the others, I'm using Medite's ultimate MR MDF panel, Medite Optima. Optima has an even denser core, reducing labour time in sanding and actually needing less paint for finishing. Optima exceeds industry standards in terms of machinability, making it the perfect choice for anybody wanting intricate designs or for deep routing applications. And even here on these doors, the simple trim cuts on the edges are particularly clean and need minimal sanding. Medite also backs up their products with plain English technical support that's easy to understand for both us and our customers. There are links in the video description to where you can sign up for additional advice or search for stockists local to you. I want to say thanks so much to Medite for their support of the channel and for this video series. So I've done a lot of videos about doors and cabinet doors in particular. There's a whole all about doors playlist full of them, links down below as always, but I've never really talked about the gaps around the doors before as it's a surprisingly complex topic for overlaid doors like these. For inset doors it's a lot simpler because your door is literally set into the cabinet or carcass. It's contained by the frame. So on a single cabinet inset door like this, and I'll just be using a plain slab of Optima to demonstrate this one, uh, you want to be aiming for about a one and a half to two millimeters, a sixteenth of an inch or just over all around the door. Uh, this isn't set in stone, you can do whatever you like, but of the thousands of cabinet doors that I've swung over my career as a fitted furniture guy, one and a half to two millimetres is kind of the sweet spot. Anything much narrower than that, around a millimetre or less, and you run the risk of the doors binding. Anything much bigger than that, three mil, an eighth of an inch or more, and it all starts to look a little bit gappy. So on a single inset door like this, you take a door blank, so that's the same size as the opening, like this one. And you trim three to four millimetres off two of the edges. And that'll give you a pretty nice even gap all around. Now obviously for a double carcass like this one, you've got to take the gap between the doors into account as well. So I'll be taking three millimetres off the width of each door, but four millimetres off the height to maintain that consistent two millimetres gap all the way around. So not looking too bad, that's for inset doors. Uh, nice and simple. Uh, when it comes to overlay doors, though, doors that lay over the face of the carcass, that covers up the edges, with overlay doors it gets a little bit more complicated because you get to choose where you want the doors to sit. Before we get into that, I just want to say that I'll be using concealed cabinet hinges for the uh, raised panel doors and these are my standard Blum 71B3550 hinges. I've talked about these before in previous videos and gone into details as to why I prefer them. You should use whatever you want. Uh, in my experience there's very little to choose between the different brands but yes concealed hinges work very well for overlay doors and they do provide a certain amount of plus minus adjustment which is very convenient. Just bear in mind though that the adjustment on the hinge is there to accommodate wonky walls and floors not shonky cabinetry or installations so keep everything straight and true at your end of things then you won't run out of adjustment on the hinges just when you need it the most. So I've finished off the raised panel doors, trimming the horns, the remnants of the loose tenons off the edges and sanding the faces where the rails and stars meet just to clean up any glue squeeze. I've marked where I want the hinges to go and I've drilled out the doors for the hinge cups and the hinge fixing screws. I've transferred those marks to the carcass and drilled out the hinge plate positions as well and then I can get all the hinge hardware fixed in place.
Okay, so that's not looking too bad. Um, as I said, with overlay doors, you get to choose where the doors sit. So on a single freestanding cabinet like this, I like to have the doors flush with the sides, so no overlap or anything. Uh, unless, of course, it's a base cabinet like this, in which case, as I said in the first of these videos, base cabinets typically have a top to them. And what you'll find is that top uh, of the door will bind against the top. So you need to drop that down by a couple of mil or shave a couple of millimeters off the height of it. There probably is enough adjustment on the hinges to drop those down by a couple of mil. But as I said before, you're better off, in my opinion, shaving a couple of mil off the top of that door and leaving the hinge adjustments for the important part when you come into doing the install. So that's what I'm going to do now. So that's looking better. No binding there. Ooh, for a freestanding camera, but what if it's not freestanding? What if this is hard up against a wall? Well then, this hinge side is going to bind. It won't open cleanly. So we need to give a little bit of clearance on that side again. One and a half to two mil is the perfect size. So that's a freestanding cabinet up against a wall with a top to it. But what if it's not a freestanding cabinet? What if it's in a run of cabinets with this double up alongside it? Well now you need another gap between these two doors, the leading edge of the single and the hinge side of the double. Of course, that gap has to be shared between the two doors, so that's a millimetre off the leading edge of this one and a millimetre off the hinge side as well. And of course, you'll also need a millimetre off each of the double doors where they meet. And of course, if you had another camera in the run, you'd need a millimetre off the hinge side of the right-hand side of those double doors too. Okay, <laughs> getting further and further back. Um, so that's those three done. We do have another single cabinet on the end here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we'll need a millimeter off the leading edge of this one, I think. Yeah, it's just snagging. So we need a millimeter off that. But because this is freestanding, we don't need anything off the hinge side. So let me just do that. And then I think it might be time for a recap. Okay, okay, so that's the door, the single cabinet at the end of the run. The leading edge of that door trimmed. So that's a nice even gap there. It's freestanding at this side, so that can be flush with the carcass. Let's just recap. This is just four doors. Two singles and a double in between. But the only two that are the same size are the doubles, and that's because they're in the middle of a run. If, if that was at the end, then they'd also be different. We've got the left-hand single here that has two millimeters off the hinge side. It's got a millimetre off the leading edge because it's up against another camera. So three millimetres off the width overall. And you've got two millimetres off the height, of course, because it's a base camera and you don't want it to bind uh, on the top. So the double here is pretty easy. We've got two mil off the height of each. And we've got minus one 
each of the edges. So overall, we've got minus two on the width and minus two on the height and they're both the same. The last single at the end of the run, uh, it's one millimeter off the leading edge because it's up against another. At minus one there, but it's nothing at all off the hinge side because it's freestanding and it can be flush with a cabinet carcass. Of course, we've got minus two off the height. So in terms of width, it's minus one. And in terms of height, it's minus two. So yeah, you can see how potentially complicated this can be. And that's just on a run of four doors. Um, multiply that up to say a dozen doors, 12 doors, like I had on this old job of mine. Uh, throw into the mix the fact that the handles on those doors were all cutouts as well, so the doors can't be adjusted against each other. You've got to move all 12, tweak them all together, plus the fact that they were all pre-finished, pre-sprayed, so you can't just trim a millimetre off one door if you need to. Factor all that in over a set of carcasses that were more than four metres wide, you can easily see how you could run out of adjustment on the hinges, how much you need to preserve that adjustment for use on site. You can see just how important it is to get the door sizes absolutely spot on. And I hope this video has helped you do just that. There's a lot of ifs and buts and maybe calculations here, I know. So I've condensed all this down to a simple door gaps fact sheet that'll go out with the next 10 Minute Workshop newsletter. So be sure to sign up to that at 10minuteworkshop.email. It's a free sign up and you'll get a link to a copy of the fact sheet that you can print out and keep as a handy reference guide. But I'll call this one done for this week. Thanks so much for taking a look. Thanks also uh, to Medite for the opportunity, of course, and the MDF. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description down below and I'll see you all again very soon. All right, take care.